The next rule we're going to be talking about is the Simpson's rule. Now the Simpson rule is another rule for approximate integrate integration results from using parabolas instead of straight line segments to approximate a curve. As before, we're going to divide the interval into n subintervals of equal length, h, which is equal to the displacement, which is equal to b minus a over n. But this time we assume that n is an even number. Then on each consecutive pair of intervals, we approximate the curve y, which is equal to the function, is greater than or equal to zero by a parabola as shown in this figure. Now, if y subscript i is equal to f of x subscript i, then p subscript i, or that point, x subscript i, y subscript i, is the point on the curve lying above x subscript i. So what's saying here is here's x sub 0, there is your point. x subscript 1, there is your point. Again here, point 0.3, point 0.4, point 0.5, and point 0.6. Now, a typical parabola passes through three consecutive points, p i subscript 1, p i subscript i plus 1, and p subscript i plus 2. And to simplify our calculations, we first consider the case where x subscript 0 is equal to negative h down here, x subscript 1 is going to equal 0, and x subscript 2 is going to equal h. So here is x subscript 0, which is the initial point, negative h. It's got a point up here, p subscript 0, where it's negative h, y subscript 0. At 0, we have a point subscript 1, which is 0, sub, uh, comma, y subscript 1. And then h, which is point 2, which is h, y subscript 2. Now we know that the equation of the parabola through those three points is of the form y is equal to a squared plus bx plus c. And so the area under the parabola from x is equal to negative 1 to x is equal to h is the following. We know that going from negative h to h is ax squared plus bx plus c dx. Now because we're going from negative h to h and we know that it's even, that means it's symmetric, okay, we know that we can use the symmetric property by taking 2 times from the interval from 0 to h of ax squared plus c dx. Now if we take the antiderivative of that, we're going to have 2 times ax cubed over 3 plus cx going from 0 to h. And so now if we apply those limits, then we would get the following, 2 times a times h cubed over 3 plus ch which is equal to the following. Factor out an h, we got h over 3, times 2 times a h squared plus 6c. But since the parabola passes through these points, we have the following. y subscript 0, plugging in our x value into the equation is going to give us the following. Negative h squared gives us a h squared minus b h plus c. If we plug in 0 in 4x, then we would just have y1, which is equal to c. And if we plug in h in for x, then we would get a h squared plus b h plus c. And so therefore, y subscript 0 plus 4 y subscript 1 plus y subscript 2 is then going to equal 2 a h squared plus 6 c. Thus, we can rewrite the area under the parabola as the following. h over 3 times y subscript 0 plus 4 times y subscript 1 plus y subscript 2. Now, by shifting this parabola horizontally, we do not change the area under it. This means the area under the parabola through those three points from x is equal to x sub 0 all the way to x subscript 2 and the figure 7 is still the following.
Similarly, the area under the parabola through point 2, 3, and 4 from x is equal to x subscript 2 to x subscript 4 is the following. h over 3, y subscript 2 plus 4, y subscript 3 plus y subscript 4. If we compute the areas under all the parabolas in this manner and add the results, then we would get the following formula. We would get h over 3, which is equal to this entire form. y subscript 0 plus 4y subscript 1 plus 2y subscript 2 plus 4y subscript 3 and so on. Although we have derived this approximation for the case in which f of x is greater than or equal to 0, it is a reasonable approximation for any continuous function f and it is called Simpson's rule after the English mathematician Thomas Simpson Note the pattern of the coefficients go from 1, 4, 2, 4, 2, 4, 2, 4, 2, 4, 1. And then here is the Simpson's rule. Now in example number 4, we're going to use the Simpson's rule with n is equal to 10 to approximate our previous example of 1 over x going from 1 to 2. The solution, well f of x is equal to 1 over x, we know that n is equal to 10, and we know that the displacement is going to equal 0.1. In the Simpson's rule, we obtain the following. Going from 1 to 2, 1 over x dx is approximately s subscript 10 because n is equal to 10. So we have change of a, um, the displacement, or the change in, that, in position of x over 3, times f of 1 plus 4 f of 1.1 plus 2f of 1.2 plus 4f 1.3 plus 2f of 1.8 plus 4f 1.9 plus f of 2. And if we plug in each one of these values into that function and get the results and multiply it by 0.1 over 3, we get an approximation of 0 0.693150, which is similar to the other ones that we have gotten. Now, the trapezoidal rule or the Simpson's rule can still be used to find an approximate value for that integral, the integral of y with respect to x. The table below shows how the Simpson's rule compares with the midpoint rule for that integral whose true value is about 0.693147.18. The second table shows how the error in the Simpson's rule decreases by a factor of about 16 when n is doubled. So again, here you're comparing the area for the midpoint rule and the Simpson's rule when n is increasing from 4, 8 to 16. And then over here, when you're talking about the error of the midpoint rule and the Simpson's rule, you can see what's happening when it's increasing from 4, 8, and 16. Now, that is consistent with the appearance of n to the fourth in the denominator of the following error estimate for the Simpson's rule. It is similar to estimate, it is, it is similar to the estimates given in 3 for the trapezoidal and midpoint rules, but it uses the fourth derivative of f. Now the error bound for the Simpson's rule, you would suppose that the fourth derivative of x is less than or equal to k, for again when x is in between a and b. So if the error of the Simpson's rule is the error involved in using the Simpson's rule, then this is the following formula for that.